And today we're gonna talk all about crabs. Okay, as you know, we're gonna be talking about crabs today. And I've gotta be honest with you guys, this has been one of the hardest videos to put together. And the reason for that is because I like to break things down into different groups to make it easier for everybody to comprehend. But typically when you think about crabs, the first thing usually that comes to mind is cleanup crews. But there's some crabs that are considered members of a traditional cleanup crew, and that's fine, but there's other crabs that aren't considered traditional members, but do still fill the same roles. So because of that, and a bunch of different outliers in these groups, I'm just gonna go super simple and break them down into size categories. So we're gonna go small, medium, large, and extra large. Now there's a huge variety of crabs that are out there in the oceans and available for sale, but these are some of the common ones that I will see in local fish stores and for sale online. So before we start off, check out this whiteboard. As I go through them, some of them are going to have different icons up at the top. So if you see a little link icon, that's going to mean that they are in a symbiotic relationship with another animal or an organism in the tank. If you see a little broom and a dustpan, that means that they are part of a cleanup crew. Or if you see the circle with the line through it, that means that they are either reef safe with caution or not reef safe at all. Okay, let's get started with our small group of crabs. First off is going to be the porcelain crab. Now they do have a symbiotic relationship with anemones. You won't typically see more than two in there, and the reason you're only going to see two if you see them is because they are in a mated pair. So they're really tiny little crabs that hang out with the anemones. Next up is going to be your blue leg hermit crab. They are one of the most common cleanup crew members. A lot of times they're the first things that people will put in their tank. Now these guys are really great because of their size. They're going to be able to get into those hard to reach places and just really do a great job at helping to keep your tank clean. Next up in our small group of crabs is the pom-pom crab. Now these guys are reef safe with caution and they're really cool. As you can see, they've got pom-poms. Those aren't actually pom-poms. Those are little anemones that they carry around and they use them to protect themselves, but also to help kind of mop up food that they might see laying around. So that, those are pretty cool. Um, that's one. It does have a symbiotic relationship in addition to somewhat not being reef safe because those anemones can sting things that they come in contact with. Next up is going to be the Scarlet Hermit Crab. These guys are bright red. Um, they're traditional members of the cleanup crew. And if you're looking to add a little bit of color to your sand bed, these might be a good way to go. Last in our small category of crabs is the Acropora Crab. Now they're one that do have a symbiotic relationship with Acropora. I don't recommend having these guys if you don't have Acro in your tank because they have to have them to survive. All right. Moving on to our medium group of crabs. First up is going to be the emerald crab. Now, if you are familiar at all with cleanup crew members, you're probably gonna recognize the emerald crab right off. They do great at getting rid of bubble algae. And one thing to note, if you put them in your tank, there's a good chance that you might not see them that frequently. And the reason for that is because they like to hang out in the rock work and typically they're only gonna come out at night and sometimes if there is food. Next up in the medium group is our strawberry crab. Now these guys are a bright red color. They are beautiful. And one thing to note about them, if you look at their claws, they have, it's, they're not pointed, they're not sharp. It's almost like dull little paddles, I guess, if you could take a look up close. And one thing to note about those is that that's a good indicator that they are reef safe, that they're going to be an algae eater. They use those um, claws to smash together and pull away algae. So it's pretty cool to check that out. They are considered a member of the cleanup crew as well. Next up is the Halloween hermit crabs. These guys are gorgeous. They're very popular just because of their beautiful and unique coloring. Now, something to note about these guys is that they're really particular about their shells. You really only see them in one type of shell. So, um, if you have one, and we'll talk a little bit about this later, consider trying to find some extra shells that are that same type for them to move around in. Now, our last member of the medium group is the staghorn hermit. These are another one that forms symbiotic relationships. These are a really cool type of hermit crab. And what makes them so special, as you can see, their shells are kind of crazy, but more than the shape of their shell, the fact that it's alive, it's actually a coral. Now, 
It's a symbiotic relationship with the coral that makes the shell. So when you have these guys, you need to make sure that you have the right lighting on your tank for that co living coral shell that they've got. All right, let's move on to our large group of crabs. Now, first in this group, and I kind of have a hard time placing him, is the arrow crab. It's not that he's physically large. If you're familiar with daddy long legged spiders, they kind of look a lot like those guys. They are really long and lanky. They got real long skinny legs, but they are a cleanup crew member that is great at helping to get rid of bristle worms and similar pests. Now, something to keep in mind with these guys is they're not always reef safe or they are fit into that reef safe with caution category. Um, I have heard stories of people who have arrow crabs that go in and like take cuttings of their polyps and those arrow crabs get booted. So just keep that in mind when you are adding one to the tank. Next up in this large category is the marine striped hermit crab. Now, if you look in the tank behind me, actually right here, this is an example of one crawling along. Now these guys, when you see them in the hobby or in the uh, shops for sale, they're not often listed or spelled out as a marine striped hermit, but a lot of times you can find them mixed in with other crabs if you know what you're looking for. Now, they're not traditionally considered part of a cleanup crew, but I've kept them for several years and I would definitely say they fall into that cleanup crew category. Next up is going to be a decorator crab. Now there's a couple different types of decorator crabs available, but the ones in particularly, they're kind of brown and almost fuzzy looking and they're not reef safe. I say this from experience, um, the first time I ever had one of these, I put it in my tank and it went through and decided that all of my zoas were beautiful and took clippings of them and put it on their body. So the name decorator crab, they get that because they like to decorate their bodies to help them camouflage and blend in with tanks. So if you've got a reef tank with gorgeous corals, I wouldn't recommend these guys. The last one in this large group, and it kind of falls in the same category as a decorator crab, is a sponge crab. They're also a type of decorator crab, but instead of decorating with, say, corals, they decorate themselves with sponges. Another one that might not be reef safe, but they are really cool if you have a Fowler tank. Just make sure that they are going to be a tasty snack for someone living in your tank. Ahem, Frank. <laughs> All right, now our last group of crabs that I'm going to talk about today are the extra large crabs. Now, typically these aren't stuff that, or these aren't crabs that you would keep in your tank, but recently, actually over the last few months, I've seen a lot of red hairy hermit crabs growing in popularity. I've seen more and more posts of people that are keeping them in tanks. Now, if you remember my first few videos, I did them in front of another tank, and that is a tank where I have a red hairy hermit crab. I bought him as a scarlet hermit and he got huge. He's almost the size of an onion now. So I wouldn't recommend them if you have a smaller tank or um, if you have any fish species that are smaller, slower swimming, they are predators. They will eat what they can catch. Now this last crab that I'm gonna to talk to you about is one that I see quite frequently in stores and I, I want to mention it because I don't really think that they should be a part of a home aquarium. Um, even if you have a really, really large tank, these guys really aren't meant to be in tanks. I Personally, I feel like they should stay out in the ocean because really they do need that large habitat. Um, but a lot of times you will find them for sale in the aquarium stores. They are horseshoe crabs. They're maybe this size or a little bit smaller. This is a molt from one of the ones that I have taken care of before. But the reason I don't recommend them is because the adults get to be this big. And this um, is probably a smaller one of the adults. So if you can imagine keeping this guy in a home aquarium is really not something most people have the size of tanks to handle. So just a word of caution, they might look cool, but it wouldn't be something that I would recommend. All right, that wraps up all of the different types, but let me go over real quickly of the sizes that they'll get in the different types of tanks that you need. So first off, those small hermit crabs that I mentioned, they're gonna be about a half an inch to an inch and a half in size. Um, they'll be really good in almost any tank that you have. That medium group of crabs, they're gonna be about two to three inches. They stay fairly small even as they grow and they molt. A large group of crabs, four to six inches in size. Um, again, they're good in pretty much 
anything like 55 gallons and up. I wouldn't necessarily recommend those for a nano tank, but uh, definitely a little bit larger tanks would be good. And the red hairy hermit crab, like I mentioned, um, it's going to need at least a 75 gallon tank, if not larger. You want to make sure to give them a lot of space to play around in. All right, let's go to the kitchen and talk about some of the things that you will be able to feed your crabs. Let's get to talking about nutrition. Now, when it comes to feeding the crabs that are gonna be in your tank, these guys are omnivores, which means they're gonna be eating a mix of meaty foods and vegetables. Now, something I should mention before we get into talking about the different types of foods, and I've said it before, is that a lot of these crabs that are gonna be in your tank that I've talked about are members of the cleanup crew, which means they're already in there for a specific purpose to help take care of any unwanted algaes like hair algae and bubble algae. Now, if they're a really efficient cleanup crew, you probably are gonna to need to supplement their diets with a little bit of something else. But just a side note that they are in there for a purpose to eat some of that stuff already, so you may not have to feed them when you initially add them to the tank. Now, I'm curious, before I get into this, if you have different kinds of crabs in your tank, do you specifically go in and target feed those individual crabs? Or do you kind of sprinkle a little bit of extra food when you're feeding your fish and coral? Leave a comment and let me know. All right, like all of the other videos that I've done, I like to break things down into several different categories of the types of foods that you can get. And first off is going to be our dry foods. Now today I'm not really gonna go into talking about flake foods because if you think about it, flake foods, when you put them in, for the most part, they stay at the top of the water. Now your crabs are gonna be living down towards the bottom in the rocks, and it's not really easy for them to get to those floating flakes, which is why I'm recommending you stick to pellets. Now when you're buying a pellet, you're gonna look for something that is dense, that has a little bit of a higher moisture content, so those pellets are gonna sink down to the bottom where your crabs are. Now there's a few different options that you have that are out on the market. Several of these today are from New Life Spectrum. So first off, we have the invertebrate reef macro feeder. It's for the inverts. They also have the invertebrate crustacean food. The only difference is the size of the pellets. So depending on the type of crabs that you have in your tank, if you've got some of those smaller ones like the blue leg hermits, this might be your best bet. Or if you've got some of those larger ones like the sponge crabs and stuff like that, this might be where you want to go. Another option from New Life Spectrum, and this one I really love, is the Algae Max. Now, what's great about this one is it's got nine different types of seaweeds and vegetables in there. So any of those crabs that are members of the cleanup crew that are naturally going after that algae, this is gonna have everything that they need in it. Next up is the Reef Nutrition TDO. Now, this one is really great for some of those smaller crabs, any of those symbiotic crabs. And it's good because a lot of times I know people use this to feed their corals. So when you're feeding the corals, it can also feed some of the crabs as well. Now this is a smaller size pellet, so if you have some of the larger crabs, this one might not be the best. All right, moving on to frozen foods. Now, in the past, I've talked about some of the frozen foods that come in those blister packets, right? Now, a lot of the blister packs, um, the food that's in them, a lot of times is really, really small pieces of food, or it's a blend of food, which is fine, but think about when you put it in the tank, your fish are gonna get to those cubes first, and then as they drift down through the water column, they're gonna be broken up into significantly smaller pieces, which is why I kind of would advise you to steer clear of them. They're great for the fish, but if you're primarily going to feed your crabs, I wouldn't use those as your first choice. Now, when you are feeding the crabs, I'm gonna recommend that you go for large chunks of meaty foods, right? All of these crabs, unlike the fish that we've talked about, are gonna have a way to tear, rip some of these meaty chunks apart, so you don't have to worry about it being too big for them. So first off is the Rod's Foods. This is the Predator Blend. It's already got those big chunks of meaty foods in there, and it's got a little bit of um, nori in there as well, so they might get a chunk of that nori so that satisfies that need for the vegetables as well as for the meat. Now, the last option when it comes to frozen foods that I really love is this seafood blend. Now, this one actually comes from Trader Joe's. This is what I use to feed my large red hairy hermit crab. It's great. He's a very large crab, and I'm able to just give him a whole piece of shrimp, and that is his dinner. So this is another option, especially if you have some of those larger species of crabs in your tank. Now, 
I did say at the beginning that they are going to be eating a lot of vegetables. And so one other thing, if you've got any types of crabs that I recommend keeping on hand is nori, right? So there's a bunch of different types of nori that are out on the market. You can get the red, green, purple, um, really whatever you're using to feed your fish is going to be good enough for those crabs. All right, that wraps up everything we have to talk about in the kitchen. Let's go discuss some of the issues that your crabs might encounter. All right, let's talk about some of the issues that the crab species you're keeping might encounter. So first off, and this is one of the biggest things for a number of species that you might keep in your tank, and that's water quality, right? So crabs in particular are very sensitive to nitrates. So you wanna make sure that you're doing your water testing on a regular basis to make sure that those nitrates aren't creeping up. And if you do notice that, go ahead and do a water change. Now, other things that you need to be testing for when you're doing your water quality testing, you need to be testing your calcium levels and your magnesium levels when you're doing those. Now, the reason I say that is because both of those play a role in the formation of their exoskeletons. Now, speaking of exoskeletons, crabs are one of the cool types of critters that you're gonna keep in your tank that actually molt. So in a similar way that a snake sheds its skin on a regular basis as it grows, these hermit crabs and these other species of crabs that you keep will actually shed their exoskeleton, grow a little bit, and just join, rejoin your tank. Now something to keep in mind when you see this happening, because occasionally you might catch it, um, a lot of times they will hang out in a corner or in a crevice where they feel really safe and secure. They'll be really still. So if you see something like that happening or going on, try not to harass them. Don't bother them. Um, let them do their thing and then they will come out on the other side. Now, if during their molting process they experience stress, if the water quality is poor, um, they might have issues in their molt and it might not be successful. So that could lead to death in some of these crabs. Now, when I say stress, I mean stress from other, either other crabs that are in the tank or a species of fish that are in the tank. So just things to be mindful of when you are observing your tank. Now, one cool thing about the molts is you're actually able to pull them out of the tank and you can dry them and you can kind of watch how your crab grows over time. So it's pretty cool. I've been doing that with my red hairy hermit crab and it's really impressive to see how much he's grown over the last few years. Next up, and again, this is another water quality related thing, is copper. So a lot of times copper is used to treat fish. Do not use copper. Invertebrates in general cannot handle it. It will kill them. So if you've got a treat, um, either take your uh, clean -a crew and those crabs out of the tank or find another medication or something that you can use to treat with. All right, let's go ahead and move on to enrichment, right? Now, again, I'm sure you guys think I'm crazy when I talk about enrichment, but crabs are really intelligent creatures and they love to explore. So one of the things that you may have noticed in my older videos when I was behind the other tank is I have a huge um, pirate ship in there and my red hairy hermit crab loves playing and climbing all over that ship. And occasionally I've actually seen him um, I'm not sure how he's done this, but I'll see him hanging on to my flipper cleaner in the middle of the glass. It's incredible how much they love to explore and play around in their surroundings. So that's one thing that you can do for enrichment is offer them a playground of sorts. If you move around your rockscape, they probably will enjoy exploring new areas. Now, next up, um, these next two kind of fall in line together are shells, right? So especially for the hermit crabs, they swap out their new shells as they grow. You're going to want to make sure to provide those hermit crabs that you have a source of uh, shells to swap in and out of. A lot of different types of crabs are very particular in the size and type of shell that they use. Some of them, like I mentioned, those Halloween hermit crabs, um, they're typically going to stay in shells like this and they don't like any other things. So having a variety of shells in different sizes for them to use is one thing that you can do to provide enrichment. Now the last thing that it's gonna sound kind of funny, but if you've got decorator crabs in your tank, so the ones that will pick stuff up and put it on them, um, you can provide them things to pick up and carry around. Now, if you have seen any of the stuff online in the last few years, you might have seen urchins wearing little tuxedo hats and stuff like that. So if you know somebody that's got a 3D printer, consider asking them to 3D print some fun things for your decorator crabs to wear and carry around. That could be fun for sure. 
All right, last but not least, let's talk about tank mates. So a lot of these, especially the cleanup crew members, they're gonna get along really well in almost any tank that you have. One thing to be mindful of is if you have any type of crab, do not keep them with puffer fish, don't keep them with triggers, don't keep them with wrasses or any other fish that are known to eat or pick on crabs. That's one reason why it's always important to do your research before you buy anything to go in your tank. If you're not sure if it'll get along, crabs are included in the uh, compatibility chart. So um, you can go to Marine Depot's blog and search for the saltwater fish compatibility chart. It'll let you know which of those will work with the crabs and which you should steer away from. Now the last thing when it comes to tank mates is over time your cleanup crew members, and these are the guys that you keep in there to help keep your tank looking good, um, you know sometimes they'll die and they should probably be replaced. Um, so giving them new friends and new uh, crabs and replenishing that supply is a good idea to do as well. And the reason I mention this is because if you're using them as a cleanup crew, a lot of times you don't realize that you need to replenish them until you have a huge algae outbreak and you've got a problem. So it's easier to stay on top of that and just kind of supplement their population a little bit at a time than it is to be freaking out when you've got an overgrowth of algae. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment, let me know what you thought of this video, and tell me what your favorite species of hermit crab is. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.